Question number four says a sledge loaded with bricks has a total mass of 18.4 kilograms and is pulled at constant speed by a rope inclined at 20.1 degrees above the horizontal. The sledge moves a distance of 20.2 meters on a horizontal surface. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the sledge and surface is 0 0.5. What is the tension in the rope? how much work is done by the rope on the sledge, and what is the mechanical energy lost due to friction. So the, the first two things we want to do is label everything we know and draw um, a free body diagram. So we know that the, the total mass is 18.4 kilograms, and we know that the um, we know that theta is 20.1 degrees and we know that it moves a distance so change of x equals uh, 20 point let me redraw that 20.2 meters and the coefficient of kinetic friction equals 0 0.5 one other thing that we can uh, infer from reading the uh, question is that um, it says that it is pulled at at constant speed so that means that the acceleration is zero okay now what we want to do is draw a free body diagram um, so I'm just gonna say that this is what we're we're moving this is our our sledge and this is my x-axis so and this is my y-axis and so we got um, a couple of things pulling on it we got this force I'm gonna call F1 and it's pulling on it at 20.1 degrees and then we've got gravity so we'll call this G uh, times M um, and then we have uh, we have um, this uh, what I'll call F2 uh, so gravity we'll, we'll just call the force of gravity we'll call that F3 and we'll call this normal force F4 and then we'll, we're going to break these down into X and Y components so F2 is our friction force so F2 F of F2 equals or let's do F1 first so F1 equals uh, cosine F um, actually let, let's do it like this F of X1 so so the amount of F1 that's pulling in the X direction F of X1 equals cosine um, equals F1 F1 cosine theta and then so F of X1 then f of x2 equals f2 so f of x2 equals f2 so we've got our two x forces and then we have our our y forces um, are balancing each other out so f of uh, f of y net would be zero um, anyhow let's go ahead and work the the problem so we know that Um, f of f of x1 so we're actually moving in the x in, in the in the positive direction f of x1 minus f of x2 equals the net force of x the net force of x and we know that the net force of x equals the mass times the acceleration and we we said that the acceleration is zero so zero so the the net force is zero so we can say that f of x1 minus f of x2 equals zero there's no net change so what we can further say is f of x1 equals f of x2 so what is f of x2 f, f of x2 is our friction so um, f of x2 is our friction so that equals the the coefficient of kinetic friction times 
the normal force and so the normal force is the sum of the y of the y component so um, what one thing we didn't mention in our free body diagram was that because um, because f1 has an uh, uh, an angle and not only does it have an f an x component it also has a y component and so the the normal force is the the difference of the force of gravity and any other forces whatever's left over is the normal force in the opposite direction of gravity so what i mean is if i have if i have 30 pe uh, 30 newtons pushing down and I'm pulling up with with 10 newtons, then the normal force would be would be 20. So there's 20 newtons of force being pressed against the ground, and the ground is pressing back with an equal amount of force. So there there would be um, 20 newtons left. So and I just deleted too much. There we go. So the normal force equals gravity times ma uh, gravity times mass minus any other force so in this case it would be f1 sine theta f1 sine theta so we can now rewrite our f of x2 as f of x2 equals the coefficient of kinetic friction and then we replace in with our equation for n and so times gravity times mass minus f1 sine theta and then we could we could de uh, distribute actually first before we do that let's go ahead and set up our new f of x2 um, actually let's let's move on and, and find out what f of x1 is so f of x1 we say that f of x1 minus f of x2 is 0 so what is f of x1 well it's the x component of f1 so the f component of f1 is um, f1 cosine theta so f1 f of x1 equals f1 cosine theta and so we can we said that f of x1 and x2 are equal so we can set this equal to to this right f of f1 cosine theta equals so i just f1 cosine theta equals so f1 fx1 equals f of x2 equals the uh, coefficient of kinetic friction times times gravity minus f1 sine theta so gm minus f1 sine theta so now what I want to do I want to distribute my coefficient of kinetic friction so I get f1 uh, cosine theta equals coefficient of kinetic friction times gravity times mass minus coefficient of kinetic friction times f1 times sine theta okay so um, what we have here we can we can add this portion to both sides and we can we will get f1 cosine theta plus coefficient of kinetic friction times f1 sine theta equals coefficient of kinetic friction gm gravity ma uh, mass mass gravity mg if you want and so what we see here is we have our two terms the the two terms both have a common factor so we can factor out F1, and we can say F1 times cosine theta plus coefficient of kinetic friction sine theta equals coefficient, let me, let me write the mu right, um, 
and that probably looks worse. Gravity times mass. And so we're about to solve for, if you haven't figured it out yet, we're about to solve for F1 by dividing this whole um, portion to the other side. And we'll have our formula that will give us what F1 equals. And if we know what F1 equals, then we know what the tension in the rope is, which is the first question that it asks. So let's go ahead and do that. So F1 equals, we got uh, coefficient of kinetic friction times gravity times mass divided by a cosine theta mk sine theta. So, or we'll just put it like this mk sine theta plus cosine theta. So basically, uh, it's the um, the one of the addition properties, the additive identity property. I think um, actually, I think additive identity is anything plus zero. But so it's saying that it's the the um, maybe the commutative property, whatever. You can switch the additions around. So and I just did that because I think it lines up, but it's not, it looks better lined up. So. Um, and that's what our, that's our formula for F1. And so if you wanted to, you could go ahead and you could plug in numbers for F1 or for all of these things, and you could solve for F1. But before we go ahead and plug and chug, um, we're gonna solve for the the second part of the equation. It says how much work is done by the rope on the sledge. So the work equals the force times the the distance. And so we we know that our force that we're talking about is the f of x force. So it's it's f1 um, cosine theta times change of of distance. So that would give us our x component of our f1 force. And so what we could put is we could we could put um, all of this in here, but I think it would be redundant to do that. So um, we'll just stop with with f f1 cosine theta and so once you've got your answer for part one you can take the cosine of that and change it uh, cha change it or change it multiply it by the change of distance or the change of location and then so the last question is what is the mechanical energy lost due to friction so if we say that f of x1 which is our our force on the rope um, equals f of x2 which was our friction force then the friction force is equal in, in magnitude opposite in direction so since force equals mass times acceleration or I'm sorry work equals ma uh, work work equals force times times distance they have the same force and they have the same distance uh, same magnitude of force, same magnitude of distance. And so therefore the work performed by the rope would be equal in magnitude to the work performed by friction. So work, uh, work performed by friction is the same thing as work lost by friction because friction doesn't produce any work, and uh, any useful work unless you're talking about stopping your car. Um, with the brakes or something of that nature so that that would be useful work but other than that it's it's all lost energy so um, you would whatever answer you get here is going to be your answer for part two so let's go ahead and plug in the numbers so our our coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.5 times gravity 9.8 meters per second squared times the mass was 18.4 kilograms. We're going to divide that by 0 0.5 um, sine 20.1 plus cosine 20.1. And so you're going to work all of this, and then you're going to divide it by all of this, and that should give you 90.16 divided by 1.11 equals 81.16 81.16 newtons 
it w uh, is going to be your your tension in the rope, and it's also going to be your net force in the positive x or it's not going to be it's going to be your force in the positive x direction. It's also going to be the same force of the same magnitude of force in the negative x direction. So, um, or actually, let me take that all all of the, what I just said back. This is going to be your your force in the 21 degree above the horizontal direction and so then you wanted to find um, you want to find the 81 times cosine theta times change of x so 81 times cosine of 21 so we can write that up here this is 81 um, cosine 20.1 times and that's just gonna bring it on down times the distance which was 20.2 so that actually gives you um, your answer in joules and it asks for the answer in kilojoules it gives you the answer of 1500 we'll, we'll just approximate it 1540 which is very close so this is joules and it wants it in kilojoules so it would be 1.54 kilojoules and so that is um, part B and it's also Part C, because they're equal.